Hey, welcome to our tutorial on digital electronics and today we're gonna discuss about the Johnson counters okay so the Johnson counters that we're gonna discuss today are you know often referred to as uh, sometimes they're referred to as you know um, twisted okay so they're referred to as twisted ring counters okay the reason why they're called so you'll discover shortly in this uh, tutorial okay so uh, for the moment just you know take or rather just keep in mind that they are also you know um, synchronous counters okay so they're also a type of synchronous counters and uh, they're you know um, constructed using uh, shift registers so the most popular uh, design using uh, the shift registers is uh, the one that employs you know uh, serial in and uh, serial out shift register basically so here we'll be using uh, this uh, same uh, method uh, you know uh, the same uh, you know the serial and serial out shift register in order to uh, draw the circuit of this Johnson counter okay so now um, okay fine so let's uh, go on to uh, the uh, diagram of the uh, serial in serial out shift register first so there you go so here's one okay uh, so we're gonna construct it using the D flip-flops in this uh, example so there it is that's the D1 input with the negative clock and that's Q1 and Q1 bar okay so there goes another uh, D flip-flop over there d d with you know D2 input and Q2 Q2 bar right here and um, it's gonna take a while you know uh, well I just say you know try and uh, draw the uh, circuit diagram over here so it's been a problem with me since childhood that I was never you know quite good at drawing so if the drawings you know messy or rather it's if it's you know obscure uh, kinda don't mind at that okay so uh, just you know uh, take notice about the uh, circuit diagram over here I'll just you know try my level best to you know keep it as clean as possible so it goes the uh, clock input to all the flip-flops so since it's a uh, you know synchronous uh, device so here uh, the uh, serial in serial out shift register looks quite like this and here there is a difference between the ring counter and the Johnson counter which is that the last flip-flops output I mean inverted output that's Q4 bar over here feeds into the input of the first flip-flop okay so that's uh, that's a D1 over here gets fed by the output of Q4 bar so here it is the, this is flip-flop number one that's two three and this is four so that's basically the circuit of the um, Johnson counter and now if we are you know before going into uh, the details about the circuitry okay so I would like to uh, tell you that uh, the uh, Johnson counter okay uh, it would just have you know two n states okay so uh, the number of states that the Johnson counter would pass through would be given by 2n where of course you know n is you know referred to as the number of flip-flops or uh, the number of bits uh, that the uh, Johnson counter is able to you know hold in itself so here since we are using you know uh, four flip-flops so uh, the number of states that this counter would pass through would be you know eight so it'll just pass through eight states that is from zero through to the state seven okay so and apart from that since we are using uh, D flip-flop I just give you a uh, quick review as to a rather recapitulation on the truth table of the D flip-flops so here the D input okay that's the clock and that's the Q and Q bar outputs over here so since we're using negative H triggered flip-flops so under the presence of the clock pulse okay if D is kept one Q would be one and Q bar zero and if D is kept at zero in the presence of the clock input then Q would turn to 0 and Q bar to 1. So that's basically the truth table of the D flip-flop over here. Okay, so now uh, that said, we'll just you know quickly move on to the uh, state uh, table. Okay, so there you go. That's uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, and there goes Q4. And here is the clock input. So basically, uh, having said that, if we just you know quickly move on to the circuit, and let's just assume that uh, the uh, output of all the uh, flip-flops is basically zero. So the outputs of the flip-flop is obtained from the Q outputs of each of the flip-flops, respectively. Okay. So all the uh, flip-flops are having you know a logic level zero at their output. So here we get zero, 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 zero. So that's basically the zero state over here. Now, uh, since if you just take note of the fact that since the inverted output, which is at obviously the logic level one, feeds the input 
terminal of that's d1 of you know the first flip flop so whenever the first i mean the negative edge of the first clock pulse you know arrives q1 will send to the logic level 1 while the rest would remain at zero lo logic level okay that's the first state and now since q1's out i mean since q1 uh, which is the output from the first flip flop feeds into the uh, input that's d2 of the second flip flop over here so therefore uh, upon the arrival of the uh, negative edge of the second clock pulse what will happen is that q2 would be uh, just i mean the output of q2 would just be you know changed from logic level 0 to logic level 1 while q1 will continue remaining at logic level 1 since the output of q output that's q4 okay is still at logic level 0 and q bar continues to hold its logic level 1 state respectively so therefore uh, the whole uh, sequence okay of this uh, you know count over here upon subsequent clock pulses okay would just you know uh, keep filling up with logic level 1 bits something like you know this as i'm just you know showing over here so that's basically you know this is the state 2 that's the state 3 and this is state 4 so here you can see uh, the logic level 1 um, bits basically you know fill up the output states of all the uh, flip flops that are being used over here so after this i mean after state 4 that is the uh, whenever uh, the output i mean that's the last output that's q4 is at the logic level 1 okay then all the flip flops would also uh, have their outputs at logic level 1 state and now q4 changes from logic level 1 to logic level 0 unfortunately so now whenever uh, and uh, since the q4 i mean q4 bar that is uh, to be specific now since this uh, q4 bar you know feeds the input of uh, the uh, over here that is that that's uh, the input of the first flip flop that's uh, d1 okay uh, you with this you know with the help of this uh, feedback path over here so now upon the arrival of the um, next clock pulse i mean the negative edge of the next clock pulse what will happen is that this logic level zero state would be you know sent as input to the uh, d1 input of the first flip flop and it'll just change its state from one to logic level zero so there you go it be i uh, just uh, i mean the q1 output just goes to logic level zero upon the arrival of the next uh, subsequent clock pulse okay and now since it'll feed i mean the since the output of uh, flip flop 1 feeds the input of flip flop 2 that's d2 over here so therefore we'd have q2 that's the output of flip flop 2 moving to the logic level 0 state uh, after the next clock i mean when when the negative edge of the next clock pulse arrives so again here we see a similar phenomena where uh, previously the output was just you know filled by the logic i mean uh, logic 1 level states and now i mean sorry the logic logic 1 level bits so now over here what we see here is that the logic level 0 bits are just filling up the output states of the flip flops again so this will just you know continue the uh, i mean the sequence would just you know continue this way and it'll just uh, continue till uh, it just you know fills up the whole thing with logic level zero states over here so there goes yeah so we are having starting from the logic level zero state over here sorry there we got you know two fours over here this should be you know five and that's six and finally it should be seven over here so that's exactly what it should be so sorry for my mistake over there so this is the seventh state to which the uh, flip flops will finally reach and then again upon the arrival of the next uh, clock pulse the output of this uh, you know uh, flip flop will just you know again uh, revert back to the first state that's the zero state from where the count started okay so this is basically uh, what happens inside a Johnson counter and now if you if you would you know like to uh, see the state diagrams in this case it would look somewhat like this so it starts from uh, the journey of the counter starts from uh, the uh, level double double zero double zero and then it moves on to the level one triple zero and then from this uh, it moves on to double one double zero okay and then from uh, this level it just moves on to triple one zero and then to uh, double one double one and then again the zero start you know filling up over here yeah the zero bits just start filling up okay there you go and then again double zero double one and finally to uh, you know that's not enough space over here triple zero one and finally from this it just moves on to the double zero double zero level right here so this is basically the state diagram okay which i just you know tried showing over here don't mind my drawing style is just you know awful since my childhood so 
I'm just sorry for you know uh, not being able to you know draw much clearly over here so just kindly don't mind at that okay so just uh, keep your focus on the topic and I'll just you know try to you know explain as clearly as possible so here uh, lastly we just come on to the uh, you know uh, the timing diagram over here okay so there you go so again uh, here is the clock input and there goes uh, the Q1 okay so these are the uh, you know timing axis okay so time axis over here that's Q2 alright and then comes Q3 yep Q3 is there and lastly we have Q4 okay so let me just you know select the yellow color for uh, you know illustration over here so the clock pulse is going to arrive at regular intervals okay so there you go so let's just draw a few clock pulses over here yeah that's enough so on the negative edge of the uh, first clock pulse what happens is that the output of Q1 you know just shoots to the logic level 1 level I mean yeah the uh, logic level uh, 1 state and it just maintains itself for about you know 4 clock periods so that's 1, 2, that's 3 and finally 4 over here just you know drops down at somewhere over here and then this uh, I mean on the uh, negative edge of the second clock pulse Q2 starts its journey for you know four clock periods as such okay that's three and that's four okay it drops down over here and then again uh, upon the uh, negative edge of the third clock pulse it is I'll just you know give you the divisions over here so that you can see it much much more clearly okay so there it goes and now uh, at the um, negative edge of third clock pulse Q3 begins its journey and continues till four clock periods so it ends over here okay so there it goes and uh, now finally Q4 would repeat the same story all over again okay so there it is uh, how the you know timing diagram of this uh, uh, flip I mean the counter basically looks like okay so you you'll basically have over here the states you know um, double zero double zero and then you'll have one triple zero and then you're gonna have double one double zero and finally you're gonna have uh, triple one zero and then double one double one okay so now again, again you'll have zero uh, triple one and then double zero double one and again you're gonna have uh, triple zero one over here and finally triple I mean double zero double zero so that's how the states you know just change over here with respect that's being just over shown here in this timing diagram so the here you got the uh, you know, timing diagram of uh, the um, you know uh, the uh, transition of the states of the output you know uh, for the Johnson counter basically so apart from that if you all would you know like to construct the Johnson counter using JK flip-flops then the circuit would look somewhat like this so that's J1 K1 that's Q1 sorry there Q1 and uh, Q1 bar okay so this is a negative edge triggered JK flip-flop we'll have another uh, one of it over here that's sorry there J J2 K2 just don't mind my drawing please okay if, it, if things get a bit obscured so just don't kindly mind at that I'll just uh, try to keep it as clean as possible okay so there it is J3 K3 and here Q3 Q3 bar okay so you can see here all the JK uh, flip-flops which I'm gonna use over here are all uh, you know negative edge triggered flip-flops basically so apart from that uh, the um, you know the um, Johnson counter okay uh, basically is uh, you know a type of counter that is you know uh, much I mean uh, comparatively you know better than that of the normal ring counters as it has you know number of I mean more number of states in this case and apart from that it requires you know uh, two uh, logic gates in order to basically uh, decode its output so since all the counters you know require that their output be decoded in order to express it in uh, decimal format which is you know um, quite easier for us to understand basically so here uh, in this uh, case what happens is that uh, the uh, Johnson counter requires uh, less amount I mean comparatively less amount of decoding uh, circuitry uh, as concerned or rather as compared to that of ripple counter so this is basically uh, the uh, circuit of the um, you know uh, the Johnson counter okay so I'll just write it over here that's Johnson counter 
uh, using JK flip-flops okay so there you go so apart from all the things that I've said is that the Johnson counter is comparatively much more economical than the ripple I mean the ring counters that we had seen in our previous tutorial so having that said over here we have sum up our discussion right here in this tutorial so I hope you've enjoyed learning through this tutorial about the Johnson counters see you don't forget to watch our next tutorial on digital electronics and thanks for watching and goodbye